One of the most important things in life is having someone to teach you the multitude of important lessons that develop and strengthen us as an individual. There are fathers, mothers, and many others. However, there is a role that can be often overlooked within this topic, which are teachers. Who must be my new students? As you all probably already know, teachers can range in wildly different ways. Where the worst ones can almost halt any progress. Why doesn't Snowdrop have to go to timeout? And make you feel worse as an individual. Because she's my favorite. Oh, I see. While the best ones are those who focus on your growth and make you feel empowered to do just about anything. Which fits the Bluey character Calypso perfectly. I started talking about Bluey due to my history of working with kids in a therapeutic setting which has inspired me to start the series. And Calypso being the main teacher of Bluey's school allows her to showcase her unique teaching method often to the audience which involves a mixture of emotional slash social guidance. Are you okay? Breadcrumbing the steps necessary to help the kids figure out their own solutions. Mm -hmm and arguably the most clever, harmonizing the kids' activities with each other's often in ways that allows everyone to be happy, even in situations where there's a large age gap between the students, or even allows certain individuals to overcome their biggest struggles. Well, I think you should go and play with that red Kelpie down there. And that's when I met Rusty. Because of this, many individuals find Calypso to be perfect in her role, and despite teachers commonly being a supporting role in media, Calypso carries this amazingly powerful presence every single time she's on screen. But before we get into the gnomes of the video, Ooh. don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much helps me out to get these videos out to more fans like you. And let's explain everything that causes so many people to say Calypso is the best teacher in media. Where are your buddies? They ran away from us. Don't they like us? Of course they do. But it can be hard being 12 years old sometimes. Here, I'll show you something. There once were two six-year-old buddies, not a care in the world. My mum left me behind, mum. They turned seven years old. Why can't you do it with your toes? I don't know. Then eight years old, Mackenzie, you know what's here now. You don't need to keep coming back to this place. Then... I can't hold it any longer! Look out! Wow! Look after Mia when she goes to big school, even though she isn't scared. Just be patient, children. Your buddies haven't forgotten you. I think the best place to start to talk about how amazing of a character Calypso is, is actually to start with her name and her voice actor, because it plays a large role into the way she harmonizes all the kids together into a perfect symphony, and that's because her entire character is a really big meta music reference. The voice actor Megan Washington is an Australian music writer and funnily enough was in a band during her youth with the famous bluey composer Joff Bush, as well as her name being based off the genre of Caribbean music also named Calypso. The reason why this is important to her teaching style as well as strength as a character becomes more apparent as we look at particular episodes and especially her debut episode fiddly named Calypso. This unassuming episode at first glance is one that introduces Bluey's school to the audience as well as many of her classmates, all with really their own agenda so once Calypso finishes story time, all the kids disperse doing all very different things. The Terriers want to play as Romans, Rusty wants to build a house, some of the girls want to play as mothers, Bluey wants to run a shop, Honey wants to build a little village for the gnomes, and Pretzel doesn't want to do anything. <sighs> What's really cool about this episode is that throughout its entirety, music plays a very big but subtle role in the episode in its slowly progressing storytelling in two special ways. Whereas Calypso can be heard humming throughout, however, as the plot continues, her humming becomes more and more powerful as well as while she goes to each student, there are little specific instruments added to represent each kid slash activity that eventually all comes together at the end in a very magical way that I'll explain in a bit. But let's try to make that coalesce as we examine how Calypso addresses each student. Once everyone has chosen what they wanted to do, Calypso chooses to first check on Pretzel in an indirect way, who is having an off day by simply saying, Look at this lovely sticker. I found pretzel as a way to encourage him to do an activity but when he refuses I don't feel like playing anything okay 
Calypso accepts his answer and doesn't press him, which may seem odd, however there are certain situations where an individual is better left alone and instead given an opportunity to collect their thoughts and emotions, or even just slowly nudge towards an answer to allow themselves to figure it out. And the latter is something we can witness Calypso do often in many episodes. I'm sorry, Indy. During this encounter with Pretzel, the background mainly plays percussion instrumentals until Honey enters a screen where a new instrument is added from the Woodwind family. As Honey pulls Calypso over to the village she made to see if it's ready for a gnome to live there, where Calypso gently encourages Honey, Well, the gnome will need a place to sleep. In another Sorry. indirect manner, similar to Pretzel. Uh, okay. Eventually, she starts making her rounds around the classroom and makes her way to Bluey, where she is running a fish and chip shop, but without any fish. We've run out of fish. As she moves onto the trio, Coco, Chloe, and Indy, all playing as mothers. My, it certainly is crowded in here and subtly encourages the girls to take their game over to Bluey's new shop. Did you know that a fish and chip shop just opened next door? To solve their crowded situation, as well as being the first in many ways, she starts her harmonizing act. She then moves on to Rusty, where we can hear a new instrument family added to the background called Strings, adding a new rustic vibe fitting into Rusty's game of building a house, where conveniently she tells him something about Indy's game. I think Indy is looking for somewhere to live. Mm. Which leads us to the final kids, which are the Terriers playing as Romans again, where the entire music motif changes to something more akin to music accompanying a castle or royal knight, but most importantly, they added a new instrument family here as well called Brass. For the remainder of this episode, majority of these instruments are all played separately rarely combined with one another until we see the specific students playing with each other, which is what Calypso has been encouraging during her walkthrough. And this can be first seen when we loop back around to the fish and chip shop with Bluey, simply loving all the business she is getting. I'm so busy! And Rusty running over to Indy to get her to move into the house he is building, which leads her needing money for rent, so she ends up becoming a waitress for Bluey, which also works perfectly for Bluey's game since she needs an extra hand due to the sudden increase in customers. And at the same time, Rusty agrees to watch Indy's baby while she is at work. Do you want to learn how to build a fence, Polly? Now I know that was a rapid fire of the sudden changes, but at this point a large majority of the kids have now become harmonized together for each of their games with the kids making the decisions for themselves to harmonize. The reason why the kids being the main decider on their actions is important is because encouraging the kids to figure out the solutions for themselves is a teaching method that allows kids to further cement important ideologies as well as social skills that help kids become amazing adults. And to take it a step further, while Indy is a waitress, she finds a way to get the Terriers involved without any indirect guidance from Calypso by asking if they want some food as well, with them agreeing in a way that fits into their game. Can we have enough to feed our whole army? Okay. This leads its way into the penultimate moment within the episode where Honey, after some time, builds an incredible village, which impresses Calypso and the rest of her classmates, causing them to crowd around it, and finally allow her to get the gnome she's been wanting this whole time, where the background music in this moment combines all the musical families except brass, and an addition of Calypso's humming serving as vocalization for the song, which is another element within music, to represent most of the students present along with the teacher. But as mentioned before, brass is missing which is meant to represent the Terriers. And the Terriers get added in a clever way as Indy makes her way towards the village where we get this cute scene. Terriers! <laughs> the village needs protecting! <laughs> Transformation! With the Terriers finally being able to implement their game into everyone else's game, we are finally able to put everything together. Calypso throughout this serves as a conductor for her orchestra she calls her classroom. An orchestra is commonly consisting of percussions, woodwinds, strings, and finally brass. So as everything settles down, Calypso goes back to sit down with Pretzel chiming in. I guess you can sit in my boat if you want. Finally showing Pretzel is out of his funk and playing with that stick all the way back at the beginning of the episode, where Calypso delivers a final line that serves to help the only final problem within the classroom. We've run out of fish. If you do catch a fish, let me know. Why? 
where we can finally hear all the different music families combined into an orchestra to symbolize all the kids together, tying everything perfectly for the finale of this rather clever episode. Because there's someone I'd like you to meet. Now I know this was a very lengthy explanation, but try to keep an eye out or an ear out the next time you watch that episode because there's a lot of little musical notes that are honestly a lot better experience than explained, so hopefully my explanation allows you to listen to those a little bit better. But now that we know how Calypso serves as the conductor for her school, Hooray! we can go over the numerous amount of other ways she is used by Ludo Studio to guide the youth within her classroom. One of my favorite examples are the ones where she is used as an aid to guide an individual that requires social or emotional guidance, such as Jack, Mackenzie, and Coco. Now for Coco's case, it's actually from an episode that has only aired in Australia called Wild Girls, an episode that has a bit of controversy regarding its quality. Oh well, that's not good. But shed some light on Calypso's character that I plan on discussing a little further into the video. However, if you're in America like me and wish to experience it firsthand, you're going to need a way to bypass location-based restrictions, which is why I'm happy to say this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is a tool that is very easy to use. All you need to do is press one button and you're connected to Australian servers. Once there, all you need to do is go to the streaming website ABC and just type in Bluey on the top right. Once there, you're able to see all the new exclusive episodes that are currently only released in Australia or even the episodes that are censored on Disney Plus like Dad Baby. But I don't know how to deliver a baby! Besides it being extremely convenient, this is the best VPN deal in the market. It stops ads and malware and you can use it to save some coins while shopping online. Not only that, it is able to protect an unlimited amount of devices and it's able to keep your Google searches in private. And you're able to get this deal with just $1.83 per month plus three extra months for free by clicking the link down below for my special link that allows you to get this limited time offer. Now as to how Calypso guides her students socially and emotionally, let's first talk about Jack and Mackenzie. Both characters are characters that are in their own rights worth analyzing because of how they are used to represent certain crowds of people, where Jack is used to represent those with near developmental conditions such as ADHD or autism, while Mackenzie is used to represent those with anxiety and trauma. Mackenzie? And I have entire videos for both of these subjects, so I encourage you to check them out if you haven't. But to explain for the context of this video, Calypso is seen subtly guiding Jack, an individual with low self-esteem and is openly self-aware of what's wrong with him. There's something wrong with me. By sending him to someone who she knows will help find Jack's self-worth after Jack's little sister Lulu blurts out. Jack can't sit still or remember anything. Well, I think you should go and play with that red kelpie down there. Calypso decided to listen carefully to what Lulu had to say and quickly decided that Rusty would be an excellent fit for Jack due to Rusty's caring nature and it works out extremely well considering as soon as Jack shows an ounce of self-doubt in himself when asked, Can you do as you told? No. Rusty clearly notices his defeated words and body language and springs into action to assist Jack. Yeah, you can play. After their initial meeting, they become undoubtedly great friends, and you can see Rusty always keeping a close eye on Jack, as well as showing patience with his memory. Tango 7! You got that? Another skill he has difficulties in, by allowing Jack plenty of time to remember the name of the tree. Tango 7! Great work, recruit Russell! By the end, Jack accomplishes many tasks he never thought himself would be able to do, but he still shows self-doubt in his abilities as the music slows down. As Rusty asks Jack, Why did you come to this school? Was there something wrong with your old school? No. There's something going on with me. I'm not good at doing what I'm told. I can't sit still. And I can't remember anything. And as the two look into the distance, Rusty once again cheers up Jack by reminding him how good he's been all day. Well, you're really good at playing army. Where you can see him smiling, because it was through this game Jack was able to contradict everything he just said. He was able to do what Stop. he was told, 
He was able to sit still, and he was able to remember literally everything by recounting the entire yeah, day to yeah. his mother. Wow, that was a lot of detail. Yeah! Calypso was able to guide Jack to an individual that ultimately made Jack feel better about himself and allowing Jack to make an incredible best friend on his first day of school. Good boy, Rusty. For Mackenzie, however, Calypso chooses to only intervene during a moment when it's critical during the episode Space. Space is an episode that is extremely hard to summarize considering the many key parts that is very telling for Mackenzie as a character that are seen within this episode. However, I'm going to try my best since it's an amazing factor into why Calypso is a great teacher. While Jack, Mackenzie, and Rusty play as astronauts exploring space, they briefly mention the multiple different places they can explore. But when Jack mentions a black hole, What's a black hole? You can start to notice some odd behaviors from Mackenzie, due to this reminding him of his past. Mackenzie throughout actively sabotages multiple factors in the game, all in an attempt to find an escape as he hides from his friends, attempting to work out his emotions. And even after being discovered, he can be seen actively avoiding eye contact with them due to how he feels, and even outright falsely blaming them for leaving him behind. We didn't! It's not uncommon to see kids use a form of play to work out a myriad of different emotions. Well, you don't want my help? Oh, you can't guard the queen. Why not? You're not good at it. I am, really, I am. Which is something Bluey shows in a couple different episodes. It's bad news, I'm afraid. The little budgie died. Oh, no, no, Mom, you have to pretend it's bad news. That the budgie's dead. But for Mackenzie, this game is being used as a safe way to work through his trauma due to an event that initially caused separation anxiety, thus his intentional wordings of You left me behind on purpose! However, what's important about this particular episode is we finally get an answer on what caused all of this for Mackenzie when Mackenzie chooses to go off course in their game to a place that started it all. The black hole. It's at this moment when he separates himself from his friends again, we can notice in the background Calypso watching it all, examining Mackenzie's behavior and allowing her to know exactly when to step in in an extremely impactful way. Because when he walks through the black hole, it causes Mackenzie to experience a half dream, half flashback sequence that is nothing short from emotional. It's at this moment we can come to realize that Mackenzie has experienced a time in his youth where he has been separated from his mom, causing his separation anxiety that we see throughout the entire episode. It's not until a little bit later we can see Calypso appear in front of Mackenzie. Are you okay? To offer a bit of guidance on how to work through his trauma. My mom left me behind. She didn't. You just got mixed up in the slide. She's just over there. Mackenzie! Hey, mom. See? Mackenzie, you know what's here now. You don't need to keep coming back to this place. What's really beautiful about this particular episode is at the end you can see Mackenzie faltering to fully rejoin his friends as he gazes back at the black hole, still showing us that the trauma is still there because frankly it's not something that just simply disappears. But this time the hole is filled with light to symbolize his new outlook on his trauma due to the words Calypso gave him moments ago. You don't need to keep coming back to this place. Giving him the strength to stop lingering on the bad parts of his past as the music swells up once again as he finally rejoins his friends. Here. Once again, extremely brief summary for Jack and Mackenzie here. I have a video for each topic that goes way more in depth than I could here, so I highly recommend checking them out since there's some key parts that I had to leave out for the sake of the video's pacing. But one interesting analysis from her character comes from her almost perfect timing she seems to have. And funnily enough, it's because of the writers wanting her to almost be a goddess figure for the children. In the Behind Bluey podcast for Rod Girls, they talk about how Calypso often appears to the children in their time of need, 
and can explain why perhaps Calypso was able to appear to Mackenzie during his moment of need in his very own flashback. And for the context of Wild Girls, when she appears for Coco, they even play a godlike melody for her introduction into the scene. Coco, that's some sad howling. Now personally, I think it's clear that this is not meant to be taken literally and she's not an actual goddess because I feel like that almost discredits the fact that she actually looks out for the kids and seeks to understand them better, like during the scene when she's watching the boys in space in the background. But I feel like it's a rather enduring way to say that the writers wanted her to appear as a figure of comfort for a lot of these children. I will say that the goddess-like traits of her might also be manifested with the fact that she doesn't really seem to have any flaws. In my other videos similar to this where I discuss a particular character in depth, I always attempt to have a part about their flaws because in writing, having a flaw in a character is important for making them seem more human or even resonate more with the audience. And when attempting to look up flaws about Calypso, because I was simply grasping at straws trying to figure that part out, oh, duck cake. a major quote unquote flaw about her is that she is perfect. However, I will say having her perfect, I feel like serves Calypso's well for her role in the story. While I would love to see an episode that explores maybe her personal life and maybe some difficulties that she might be hiding, I think the way the writers use her already causes many scenes to become emotional within Bluey's school and serves as a perfect mitigator for harder to explore difficulties in life that many of us come to experience in our youth. It's rare to see a piece of media tackle so many touchy subjects, and through Calypso, we are able to relive moments from our youth that perhaps we didn't have a healthy way of navigating. Like feelings of having to leave your friends behind as you transition into the next stage of your life. Look after Mia when she goes to big school, even though she isn't scared. The confusing feelings we may experience that seem out of our control. My mom left me behind. Or even just the feeling that you're different from everyone else. Why can't you do it with your toes? I don't know. Calypso is seen time and time again allowing the kids to navigate these difficulties in life and thus the audience the same difficulties. Which is why this and many more is why Calypso is the best teacher in media. I will admit, even at this point, there's many more things I want to say about Calypso's character. However, we'll have to leave that for a time when I deep dive an episode that features her because this video would go on for hours. And please join me next time as we analyze everything Bluey. Normally I would say what my next video plan is, but I feel like it would be more fun to be spontaneous on my next video. So make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss her any new video that I post. And if you made it this far in the video, you probably noticed that I'm wearing a Pugly shirt. Yes, there are Pugly merch that you can actually buy now. You can buy stickers, you can buy it on a mug, you can buy it on pretty much everything. I'm looking to make more merch designs further down the road that is Bluey related, that doesn't get me copyright because I gotta be careful with that. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for everyone for your patience with my channel. There has been some difficulties in my personal life and even YouTube themselves giving me a headache with some false claims in my videos saying that they're made for kids, which I luckily was able to get resolved recently. That has been draining me to the point of low productivity. So I just wanted to say that I really appreciate all of you still being with me as I figure some of this out. It means the world to me that I get to call so many of you friends and that you all are continuing to support me. It makes me feel like the luckiest person alive, honestly. And of course, I can't forget to mention the amazing support you've given me to get to 32,000 subscribers. There really isn't enough words in the dictionary to fully express how happy you buddies make me feel. And with that, I got some really stellar fan art to celebrate this milestone, as well as some really generally awesome fan art. But I also actually receive something physical like that I can hold in my hands sent to me in my P.O. box that I recently opened up allowing you guys to send me fan mail if you'd like and the P.O. box information should be somewhere on the screen but there's a person on Twitter by the name of Wolf Rez and they went out of their way to send me the 32k milestone fan art in a postcard let me see if I can't get it like nice on the screen but 
it's kind of glaring, but I'll, <laughs> I'll show it actually on the screen as well. But he also sent me a couple different things as well I would like to show you just because they're all really exciting in my opinion. It was him and a couple other friends that sent me some cool merch. So I got this awesome stripe thing, these uh, jack stickers. Of course I love these jack stickers and these two keychains. And I'm gonna have to like get a shelf in the background of <laughs> my, uh, my office space here. So I can put some of the stuff I got back there and of course some of the other Bluey merch I have. So thank you Wolf of Res for sending me that. And of course, making that awesome fan art, and of course, the two anonymous friends for sending me all this and setting this all up. And I'm not even sure how to fully express it, but let's show some <laughs> of the other fan art that you guys made for me, and their Twitter handles will be on the bottom left as in tradition. This first one is sent from Picker Biscuit, and it says level 30 as a clever way of saying 30,000 subscribers, which is really, really awesome. I really like that it says level 30 because it's video game like and it having pixels, so it really fits into the whole theme that they're going for and I think this is the first time I got pixel art to an extent for Pugly so I thought that was really really cool. This next one is actually comes from an Instagram user by the name of Tag G's Draws. I'm not sure how to fully describe this but their art style is just awesome. I love how floppy the ears look like it's going right over the actual sunglasses themselves. I really love how round and bubble like I suppose certain aspects of this drawing looks. It's just generally a really appealing art style. This next one is with Marky. If you don't know already, you should if you're watching this channel, but Jack is my favorite character, so we're just hanging out. <laughs> and I just absolutely love how happy Jack looks here. Just any art with interactions with Jack really makes my day. So this is just a treat and I love how he's wagging his tail. It's just so cute. This next image is from Wowie with a big 30k on a screen here, which is my character sitting there with an awesome lighting effect. Now, if you already know me, you know I love Wowie's backgrounds and the way he implements certain elements into his drawings, as well as the theme of this kind of being symbolic for me as a YouTuber, so that was very sweet. Now, this next piece is by Kitten, where she is celebrating my milestone of hitting 30.4k. I really really love this piece because there's a lot of little different things that I personally really love. I love pizza, I love burgers, I mean really who doesn't, but I love space so this was really really awesome for me to see. As well as the pupils being stars, I think that's just a awesome little touch. Now this next piece is by Bluey and Marshall Fan. This is a hand drawn one as you can see on the screen here and it says 30k subs on my sunglasses as well as having a nice personalized message where it says congrats on 30k and I even made a t-shirt for you. It says I love Jack which I really appreciate of course and he even says to have a great weekend near the end so I really appreciated that. Now this next one is by an artist I'm honestly not 100% certain how to say the name. I think it's Sel and this piece is just an awesome little escape art style piece of course inspired by the escape art style in the episode escape. They're a fairly new artist and they've made a lot of really awesome pieces but I really like how they implemented their art style and added a few new flares for themselves like adding the glares on my glasses. Something about the escape art style always appeals to me so this was awesome to see. Now this next one is pretty unique. It's more or less like a wallpaper of Pugly. So Not Joseph has been making a bunch of little wallpaper like designs for everyone's OCs on Twitter and I really like how they did my design in particular because they have the freckles included and of course the sunglasses but it also kind of looks like a burger <laughs> I think that's kind of really fun but that's just how the colors happen to come out it's obviously not meant to be that but that <laughs> was what struck my mind after looking at it for a bit now this next one is another new bluey artist by the name of alpha wolf dylan now this is for 31k and this piece is just me sitting on a beach they mentioned how this is the first time doing a digital art piece so i thought it was very complimenting that they wanted to go out of their way to make an art piece for me on a medium that perhaps they're not quite familiar with. And if you look closely, you can actually see a fidget popper there, which is a reference to the episode Cricket, of course, because that being my favorite episode, but of course it being a reference to Jack itself, so it's a little Jack cameo as well. Now this next one is by Kaki. I really enjoy almost, it kind of feels like the character looks a bit cocky, I'm not really sure how to fully describe it, but the tongue being out and the eyebrows exudes a certain type of feeling I'm not sure how to fully describe, or I guess an expression. It all looks very round and appealing. I always love seeing their art on my feed, so it's a big joy to see that they suddenly made fan art for me. 
And finally, this last one is by Milo. Now Milo has me saying congrats on 30 plus K. And I really like the scarf-like accessory they put on the character here and the way that the ears are like almost flowing off my face. It just looks very dynamic and fun. I really appreciate you all sending me your awesome work. It really makes my day whenever I get a notification on my phone and it's from just one of you buddies sending me a fantastic drawing or anything in general. And if you'd like to send me fan art, please send me a direct message on my Twitter here. And if you don't use Twitter, of course, you can send me an email and my email is on my about page on YouTube. And of course, a special thank you for the members who support me as little as $5 bucks a month, which are Clairvoyance, Rick and Glacius, Zach, Mr. Kitty, Snowy, and of course, Jonathan. And if you'd also like to support me, please consider clicking the link on the top left or in the comments or description to become a member. And don't forget to use my link down below for that special deal from Atlas VPN. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>